Hold on to your seats, folks. We're diving into the riveting and shocking journey of Cam McLeod and Briar Schmigelski, a terrifying duo who spread fear across Canada's untamed wilderness. Despite a colossal manhunt led by the Canadian Armed Forces and the RCMP, the way their reign of terror was ended was nothing short of unconventional. A member of the Fox Lake Cree Nation and a raven, of all things, closed the chapter on their gruesome story. Now let's shift gears and take a moment to bask in the breathtaking beauty of Sydney, Australia's tropical paradise. It's hard to imagine a better place on Earth. Picture sandy beaches hugging a vibrant city, all bathed in golden sunshine. There's so much to love about Sydney and one fortunate local who knew this was Lucas Fowler. Born on September 30th, 1995, Lucas was a Sydney native through and through. Raised in Hornsby, he was the son of New South Wales Police Chief Inspector Stephen Fowler and his wife, Shannon. Growing up alongside his brothers Jacob and Isaac and his sister, Savannah, Lucas enjoyed a happy, fulfilling childhood. He attended Curring Guy High School and was known for his thoughtful and adventurous spirit. His older siblings undoubtedly had an impact on his passion for the great outdoors, camping, and dirt biking. In 2016, Lucas's love for travel led him on a two-year worldwide backpacking trip. His travels eventually took him to the sun-kissed country of Croatia, nestled in the southeast of Europe famous for its stunning islands, natural beauty. And yes, Game of Thrones, Croatia boasts even more sunshine than Sydney. It was in this gorgeous land that Lucas's path crossed with that of Chinna Dees. Born on January 25, 1995, Chinna hails from North Carolina on the U.S.'s eastern coast. The daughter of Duane and Chinna Dees and sister to British Stretson and Kennedy. Chinna was a student at Appalachian State University in Boone, North Carolina. Just like Lucas, she had an uncampbell thirst for travel, and so their epic journey began. Their shared interests served as the catalyst that first brought Lucas and Chinna together. From the get-go, Lucas was smitten with Chinna, and it wasn't long before she reciprocated his feelings. Love blossomed between them, despite being thousands of miles away from their respective homes. But when you fall head over heels for someone who lives continents away, what do you do? Lucas didn't see it as a hiccup. With gusto, he secured a working holiday visa for Canada almost immediately. The duo celebrated their inaugural Christmas together at Chinna's home in the U.S. As the new year chimed in, Lucas embarked on a journey to work on a ranch nestled in a secluded part of British Columbia, Canada's westernmost province. The work was grueling, but he relished his time in the great outdoors, basking in the proximity to nature and animals. Lucas would often spend hours during his downtime conversing with Chinna over the phone. Soon enough, she joined him at the ranch. During this period, the lovebirds hatched a vibrant plan. Equipped with a blue van, a nest egg, and an insatiable desire for the Canadian wilderness, they deliberated for a week before packing up, bidding the ranch's owner adieu, and setting off for Liard Hot Springs. Fast forward to the evening of July 13th, 2019. Lucas and Chenna were seen on CCTV at a petrol station. In Fort Nelson, pulling up in their minivan to refuel, they were cruising in a 1986 blue Chevrolet van, a testament to Lucas's patience and handyman skills honed at the ranch. Their affection for each other was palpable, unchanged from the day they fell in love. The surveillance camera caught them in an extended, introspective embrace. Chinna strolled into the station while Lucas topped up their van, later joining her to snag some dinner. It was a balmy, sunny evening in British Columbia. As they returned to their van, an ice cream cone was spotted in Chinna's hand. They drove off, their hearts brimming with anticipation for the adventures that lay ahead. Sadly, their last recorded appearance would be on this CCTV footage. Merely 36 hours later, they were found lifeless. On July 14th, Lucas and Chinna's van reportedly broke down on the Alaska Highway, around 20 kilometers south of Liard Hot Springs. Around 3.20 p.m., a mechanic named Curtis Broughton and his wife, Sandra, stopped by to check on the couple after spotting their van. Despite the setback, the young couple seemed to have everything under control. They were enjoying a roadside picnic while waiting for the van to unflood. Lucas confidently assured Curtis of his mechanical prowess, leading Curtis to wave them off. At approximately 7 a.m., the following day, the bodies of Lucas and Shinna were discovered. The van hadn't budged an inch. A mere five feet separated them when they were both discovered lying face down in a ditch. They bore visible gunshot wounds. Five spent shell casings were found in the vicinity, and the van's rear doors were ajar. The windows shattered. The tragic news shocked not only their friends and family, but also resonated deeply across communities in British Columbia. In the throes of youthful adventure, an upbeat couple set off to make unforgettable memories, but their journey ended tragically in a chilling murder. Yet this horrifying incident was just the beginning of a series of dark events. 
Five days later, on July 19th, an uncanny scene unfolds about 200 kilometers west of Liard Hot Springs in Dees Lake. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police received a distress call in the morning, reporting a truck ablaze near a highway pullout. At the same spot, the police were informed of a body riddled with injuries and lying in a pool of blood, found a few kilometers south of the burning truck. The identity of the man and the owner of the truck were mysteries waiting to be unraveled. As the day progressed, the fog of uncertainty began to lift. The burning van's license plates led the police to a young man named Cam McClyde. Further inquiries with Cam's girlfriend revealed that he and his friend, Briar Schmigelski, had been saving for a trip north in search of employment. While the man's identity was still unknown, they were sure he didn't match Cam's or Briar's descriptions. Consequently, the duo was reported missing. British Columbia found itself entangled in a bizarre and unsettling situation at this juncture. A couple was shot dead, a third person's body was discovered 200 kilometers away, and two young men were missing with their truck found in flames. Could it be the work of a rampaging killer who had kidnapped two 19-year-olds? The pieces of the puzzle didn't quite fit together. In the ensuing days, the RCMP would uncover more about Cam McLeod and Briar Schmigelski. Both hailed from Port Alberni, a tranquil port city on Vancouver Island, with a modest population of 18,000. The town, heavily dependent on salmon fishing and forestry, offered little scope for thrills and grandeur. For Cam and Briar, this lack of excitement left a void, a yearning for a challenge. Before their secondary school, they had worked at the town's Walmart at 19, but their lives seemed monotonous. Their solace, they are avid gamers, especially Call of Duty. However, their gaming hobby raised eyebrows, particularly Briar's. Between 2017 and 2019, he started losing friends due to his disturbing behavior. He often praised Hitler, shared his extreme ideologies, and made his friends uncomfortable with his Nazi armband pictures. His fantasies of enacting shooter games in reality were concerning. His frequent remarks like, what if this was real? Can you imagine if this was real? Gave him a perverse thrill. The situation was escalating, and so was the terror in British Columbia. As detectives tirelessly pieced together the puzzle, the sinister movements of Cam and Briar started to take form. On the brisk morning of July 12, 2019, just two days before the tragic demise of Lucas and Shinna, Cam and Briar had bid their homes in Port Alberni goodbye. Later that day, they were spotted leaving Cabela's armed with an SKS carbine and a cake. Fast forward to 7 p.m. on July 15th, the unfortunate day Lucas and Shinna lost their lives. Surveillance cameras caught Cam and Briar at a gas station near Whitehorse in the Yukon Territory. The path from these two points sliced right through the area where the young lovers were found, their lives stolen by gunfire. The plot thickened on the morning of July 19th when CCTV captured the duo again, this time at a gas station near Terrace, B.C., but with a new accomplice, a RAV4. By July 21st, Cam and Briar had made it to a store in the quaint city of Moda Lake in Saskatchewan. Having traversed over 1,300 miles across Canada, they were now steering towards Hudson's Bay. July 22nd marked a gruesome week since Lucas and Shinna were discovered. The RCMP, with mounting evidence, were convinced Cam and Briar were not just missing. They were the culprits. Two significant events marked this day. First, a call from Vancouver cracked the case further. A woman claimed her husband's face matched the sketch of a man found two kilometers from Cam's torched truck. She hadn't heard from him since before the murder. DNA tests would later confirm the chilling truth. The body was indeed her husband, Leonard Dyke. A 64-year-old botany lecturer at the University of British Columbia, Leonard was merely seeking solace in the wilderness from his classroom duties. The car he was driving, the RAV4, was spotted with Cam and Briar days earlier. The second major breakthrough, the RCMP's official announcement. Today, I'm here to request public assistance in locating suspects in connection to the Northern British Columbia investigations. As a result of the information and the appeal to public that we made yesterday in connection with the Dees Lake investigation and the disappearance of Cam McLeod and Briar Schmigelski, we were able to confirm new information and issue a new plea. For the past few days, investigators have been focusing their efforts on locating Cam and Briar, given that their vehicle and camper had been located on fire and the two were considered missing. We have also been working to identify a man whose body was discovered deceased two kilometers south of the vehicle fire at a highway pullout. Investigators have also been able to confirm that Cam McLeod and Briar Schmigelski have left British Columbia. We believe that they're likely continuing to travel. Though we don't have a possible destination, 
we can now confirm that they were last seen driving a gray 2011 Toyota RAV4. Given these latest developments, Cam and Briar are no longer considered missing. The RCMP are now considering Cam McLeod and Briar Schmigelski as suspects in the Dees Lake suspicious death and the double homicide of Lucas Fowler and China Dees. We're asking for the public, if you spot Briar or Cam, consider them dangerous. Do not approach. Take no action and call immediately 911. On the day the RCMP made their announcement, a report came in of a flaming vehicle spotted in the isolated reaches of northern Manitoba. Billy Beardy and Tamara Beardy, a couple from the Fox Lake Cree Nation, an indigenous community north of Manitoba, stumbled upon this site while they were out picking berries. Smoke billowed above the trees, capturing their attention. The car bore a striking resemblance to Leonard's RAV4. Unaware of the fugitives at the time, Billy and Tamara did their civic duty and informed the police about the burning vehicle. There were no signs of Cam or Briar, but a couple of days later it was revealed that it was indeed the vehicle the duo had been driving. Cam and Briar were on a wild dash for freedom, having covered a staggering 2,000 miles from Dees Lake to Sundance, as far east as one could possibly drive. When they reached the end of Rural Road 290 and couldn't go any further, they ditched their vehicle dragging it off-road before setting it ablaze with matchsticks. Although the RCP and the Canadian Army were aware that the fugitives were in the area, they were clueless about their exact whereabouts. The worst part? They didn't know if the fugitives hid in plain sight, possibly stalking their next victims. The days that followed saw a surge in police and military presence in the area of Gillam, a town to the southwest of Fox Lake. The land was scanned with infrared from a helicopter, military flights were scheduled across the Nelson River, and local railway lines were locked down. Police dogs boots on the ground, drones in the air and military vehicles on the roads were all deployed, yet Cam and Briar remained elusive. The conspicuous absence of an army presence in Fox Lake added to the frustration. Sure, there was a sighting of Cam and Briar in Gillum, but it was nowhere near the torched vehicle found east of Fox Lake and Sundance. This left the residents of Fox Lake in a state of fear. Why had the RCMP left them unprotected? For many, it was their first time locking their doors at night. The search around the torched vehicle continued relentlessly day and night, with the search area expanding over time. However, the fugitives remained at large despite the unwavering focus and tireless efforts. The clock struck August 1st, and a glimmer of hope was finally kindled. Eleven days had passed since Cam and Briar ditched their RAV4, but the searchers' perseverance had led to discovering a vital clue. The dense forest often swallows objects into its thicket, but a second look revealed Brian's backpack in the woodland, a stone's throw from the car. Nearby, a cache of unspent bullets hinted at the trail Cam and Briar may have taken, guiding the RCMP in the right direction. The very next day, more items were found scattered about 10 kilometers away from the car along the Nelson River. A boat soon surfaced in the river's swell. The searchers' focus sharpened, their eyes homing in on the Nelson River. But as before, the breadcrumb trail of clues led to a frustrating dead end. Patience was stretched thin. The Canadian Armed Forces and the RCMP were running on empty and anxiety spread like wildfire in nearby communities. The burning questions remained unanswered. Where were Cam McClyde and Briar Schmigulski? Were they still among the living? What were their plans? Enter our unlikely hero, Billy Beardy, the first to spot the burning car and report it to the police. Billy spent the following three weeks aiding the search efforts. His intimate knowledge of the local area and his help transporting military personnel were invaluable. On August 7th, Billy was out on the river with an army crew, combing the riverbanks for discarded clues. As the water grew faster and more treacherous, Billy's experience became crucial to navigating the waterways safely. In a fleeting moment, Billy spotted a raven fleeing from a ravine. His Fox Lake Cree Nation membership had taught him that a raven's presence often indicated a nearby food source, like a carcass. He persuaded the military personnel to steer the boat towards the ravine's edge. And there, a staggering discovery awaited them. They had found Cam McLeod and Briar Schmigelski, both lifeless. Cam had shot Briar before turning the gun on himself. Next to them, their rifles and a cell phone filled with goodbye videos were found. Cam and Briar admitted to the three murders in their videos, revealing plans to reach Hudson Bay, commandeer a boat, and escape to Europe or Africa. Realizing the river's vastness and swift currents, their plan was revised. Briar confessed they had shaved in anticipation of their deaths but had intended to continue their killing spree. Their final video contained their last will, expressing a wish to be cremated. 
the manhunt for Cam and Briar had reached its grim conclusion. Investigations later revealed that they had left their hometown in search of work, but when they found none, their intentions took a sinister turn. The reason behind Cam and Briar's murderous spree remains a mystery. In their chilling final videos, the perpetrators offered no explanation for their actions, nor did they express remorse for the tragic loss of their three victims, Lucas Fowler, Shinadis, and Leonard Dick. Investigators confirmed that a gunshot from Cam's SKS rifle tragically ended Leonard's life. Leonard's departure leaves a void in the lives of his wife and numerous students who fondly remember his eccentricity and zest for life. Known as an incredibly bright and intriguing personality, Leonard was truly grounded with a deep connection to nature. He cherished solitude in the great outdoors, a passion he pursued to his last moments. Let's also remember Lucas and Chinna, two young adults in the prime of their lives embarking on their journey of independence, exploration, and an exciting new relationship. A couple brimming with love had their lives cut short by a duo devoid of the same emotion. Despite his extensive career in law enforcement, Lucas's father, Stephen Fowler, confessed to journalists that nothing could have prepared him or his family for the unbearable weight of this catastrophe. Their absence will be deeply felt, as will Leonard's. Since the grim discovery of Combs and Briar's bodies, the Kaiwatan Tribal Council has honored Billy for his invaluable contribution to the manhunt. Billy risked his life for weeks, and it was his traditional hunting skills that finally brought an end to the killer's saga. The Canadian Armed Forces could certainly gain insight from Billy's approach. No high-tech equipment was necessary here, but a bulletproof vest could have been helpful. During the three weeks Billy dedicated to hunting the fugitives, it's a reminder that often, it's the most straightforward technique that can unravel a mystery. So what's your take on the case of Cam McLeod and Briar Schmigelski? Do you believe there was a specific motive? What do you think drove them to embark on this murderous rampage?